a lot of players struggle to get the 30 million kill achievement when kvk comes around in rise of kingdoms and this achievement is arguably more important now than it has ever been throughout the game because the conquest coins are how you're going to get your hands not only on the kvk blueprints which you need to level up their iconic tier but this is also how you can guaranteed get a useful inscription for your armaments and not to mention getting faith six and seven will guarantee you two more iconic crystals which you're desperately going to need as you craft more legendary equipment so today i have 17 tips for you guys to help you reach that 30 million kill mark in kvk but first what's going on guys cheers this is coffee number two for the day by the way now the first thing that i want to start with is that if you are a new free-to-play player this achievement could be quite difficult for you to get depending on how much time you can spend playing during that kvk your schedule might just not line up with some of the big events and we're going to talk about that later but it's important that you start working on this event as soon as you possibly can in kvk you don't want to be rushing at the end of the event to try to get this done you want to make sure that you can get it comfortably and that means starting early now for those of you that are curious these were my final kill stats in this kvk huge shout out to those in my kingdom that actually take the time to do all the math and calculate all the stats for our entire kingdom it's actually insane but as you can see here a majority of my kills came from pass eight and king's land the total amount of kills that i got in this kvk was 33 million four hundred and ninety seven thousand and almost 27 million of those came from pass eight and king's land alone so it is possible to crunch all of this at the very end of kvk when it really matters the most but if you are a free-to-play player or you only have a handful of armies which we're going to talk about later it's better to spread this out throughout the kvk now first pass opening was on thanksgiving so i just wasn't there for that so anyway it is what it is uh this is the total amount of kill points that i got for this kvk we got 635 million kill points and a vast majority of those came from tier five okay you can see literally 30 million of my kills were tier five right and we had 3.4 million kills for tier four and then if we jump over to my hall of heroes you can see i have only 1.7 million dead troops a majority of those were infantry which is kind of unfortunate because i was rocking two infantry armies all kvk so i was losing infantry pretty steadily i'm gonna have to train a ton of those for the next kvk of course so overall my deads could have been a little bit better we're currently sitting at 77 million power i think i was at 87 million power when kvk started or 86 something like that but at the end of the day i'm happy with my performance now let's go over the armies that i used during this kvk and if you watched my video that i made before kvk talking about what i planned on using then you're going to notice that it's very similar and there's one army in particular that i want to talk about of course i did use guan cpo and this army let me tell you guys still absolutely pops off this is from a pure trades perspective this army performed pretty much as well as my nevsky joan i'm not kidding it performed super well it could be because this has my best gear on it of course so i'm not going to pretend like that's not the case but guan cpo still going into 2024 is going to absolutely clap in the open field the second army that i used and this is the one that i wanted to talk about in this video was liu che primary with Tarek secondary now i did experiment with it the other way around primary with Liu Che secondary Liu Che primary performed much better and I think part of the reason for that is because my Tarek is 5515 which means in the open field he doesn't appear expertise and so people probably just assume that I'm a free-to-play player or something like that and people just target the non-expertise commanders of course so that could be part of it also defense tree in the open field I don't know the attack tree just seemed to work much better here the other thing that I tested here was Liu Che with Sargon as much as I wanted Sargon to work here I just found that I got better trades with the 5515 Tarek it just it is what it is and I think the reason for that is because the amount of damage that you output instantly with the active skill on Tarek is super super important and also the rage debuff that you get on the fourth skill from Tarek has a chance to occur more frequently because of the additional normal attacks on Liu Che of course it is a very long cooldown but overall I found Tarek to be much more effective now that's not to say that you can't use Sarg on here but for me this was the best secondary infantry army that i could run now of course if you're going to run one army then it's going to be liu che with cpo of course that is the one army that you should be using the third army i used here and this one i used probably the least i mainly used this in king's land but this was my Boudica with zhuge liang this still performs super well in fact this performed so well that i'm considering holding off on investing in herman prime just because like this just did well man it just did really well yes it's very slow 
yes if you get caught in the open field you are in trouble but for somebody who I mean for me like I don't even have full legendary stuff on here right like this gear performed decent okay it performed decent so I'm happy with how this worked out fourth army was Huo with William and last army is Nevsky with Joan so these are the five armies that I used a majority of the KVK I used two infantry and two cavalry that just happened to be how it how it went down I would save my archer army to reinforce rallies and things like that and then later in the KVK I was five marching it okay so those were the stats and armies that I used let's jump into the first tip now the first thing that I want to go over is which commanders to use now I think some of the commander pairs that I showed just now are some great options I think the AOE is really going to help you in big open field fights just farm a ton of kills but there are some other options now a lot of people will point to Attila with Takeda or Attila with Nevsky as a way to farm kills your own personal kills in the open field and I think that the Attila Takeda it still performs well I think it's aged it, you know it's showing its age a little bit here but it still does really well you can definitely still farm a bunch of kills in the open field with that if you want you could use the Nevsky instead of the Takeda because Takeda doesn't really have that many uses these days except for well city rallies it still performs super well there uh it's like the go-to for that another pair that I've seen a lot of players use to farm kills recently is actually Gorgo primary with Liu Che secondary as a really sort of tanky but high damage output march in the open field I am not going to be investing in Gorgo for open field fighting uh, I think that I was very dismissive of her when she first came out for open field fighting but as it turns out you can use her pretty effectively in the open field people do it she is very slow by the way so this is really good for when you're playing defense and the enemy is coming to you but if you can stay connected with Gorgo and Liu Che I think you're gonna be able to farm a lot of kills with this army also I know people say that uh Pakal Herald is a great army to farm kills uh, I think that that is not as much the case anymore Pakal Herald used to be really hard to counter but now that we have commanders in the game like Boudicca Prime and soon we're gonna have Herman Prime coming into the game I think Pakal as a as an open field commander has really lost his luster his skill damage is really low the the shield here is very very weak and even you know the the Herald he's debuffing his own defense I think that this pairing you can still use it and I do still see people use it but it's no Nowhere near as good as it used to be and I don't want to pretend like it is it's not Pakal Herald not what it used to be you can still try it another alternative to that would be Martell with Herald or Martell with Alex if you are in KVK2 for example those are you know of course Martell is free so you're always gonna have access to him and I would say you probably want to use Martell over Pakal strictly because you don't have to invest in Martell you're gonna get him for free right so I think Pakal probably still performs better than Martell when it comes to farming kills but Martell is free so I would say just go with that moving on to tip number two we're going to talk about crystal tech now here's the thing with crystal tech I would recommend that you focus on one or two of these uh, of the stats for your different troop types and this is what this is why for me I was running mainly infantry and cavalry in the open fields and keeping my Boudicca on the bench until the end of KVK because I did improved bows last okay I put all of my crystals into stats on my infantry and on my cavalry as you can see here it, it's farther along than my improved bows three right so I think by sort of min maxing in that way you're going to get the most amount of stats for the armies that really really matter I do want to say though like obviously my crystal tech is not great I did buy the pop-up bundles here but I never bought any mountain warfares and I gotta say you do not need to max your crystal tech to get 30 million kills absolutely not it is not required at all you can see I didn't even get improved morale okay in fact I actually skipped the last two pop-up bundles I think both of them are $20 each so for free to play players you know you're really gonna have to grind you're really gonna have to min max and if you guys want to kind of simulate how far you can get into crystal tech I'm gonna put a link down below the individual who made the rock battle simulator also has a crystal tech simulator so I'm going to link that down below it's a very useful tool to just see how many crystals exactly you need to get exactly what you want without having to you know actually spend them in games so you can plan accordingly and of course if there is one thing that you do buy it should be the premium season crystal supply bundle you should buy this on day one of kvk i think it's five dollars and you just get a ton of crystals every single day this is going to be a great source of progress for your crystal tech the last thing i want to mention about crystal tech here for tip number two is that the most important stats in crystal tech are number one troop capacity this is by far the most important stat 
for any for all of your crystal tech this directly improves the amount of damage you deal with every single army it improves your normal attack damage counter attack damage skill damage everything I also put a lot of value in March speed okay especially if you have multiple infantry armies you're not going to be dealing damage to an army if they're running away okay so you need to have as much March speed as you realistically can get now of course if you're going to trade off a certain amount of attack for March speed you're gonna have to make that decision for yourself but I think that March speed is very important and then finally if you can get your hands on special medicines this is going to be very important for healing your tier five units this will add up over time moving on to tip number three and that is related to tip number two which is troop capacity you should always be using a 50 percent troop capacity bonus when you're entering into a really big fight now if you are running out of troops or you're going up against the enemy's downtime or maybe your enemy is a very weak kingdom then you can consider using a 25 percent expansion but realistically there is no single item in the game that will get you more bang for your buck than a 50 percent troop expansion this is an unbelievable amount of bonus troops to bring onto the battlefield this will instantly improve all of your reports and i will recommend that you use some combination of tier four and tier five units especially if you're a free-to-play player you can rock all tier five there were moments in my kvk where i was doing that but it does get very expensive okay so if you want use maybe 10 or 20 percent or upwards of 50 percent tier four if you have to but try to get as as much as possible to use the 50 percent expansion if you're not using it your enemy might be and they're probably going to beat you in the open field every single time even if you have slightly more stats they just have more troops and they're going to win on top of that you should always be fighting with a 10 percent defense token which you can get from your vip shop i used all of mine in fighting but you should be buying these when more than gems shows up you should buy just a couple of these get a handful of them okay it's only 750 gems but it instantly gives you 10 percent defense for a day which is amazing you're not going to get better value than this very very important stuff here. tip number four has to do with which armies you should be targeting in the open fields and I've made entire videos dedicated to this and this tip really only applies if you are not fighting in dot mode which we're going to talk about in just a little bit if you guys don't know zooming out this is what players call dot mode and you can actually control your troops in dot mode as you can see here I'm on PC and I can kind of just use hotkeys and right clicking to move my armies in dot mode if you are not in dot mode though then you can actually and just to be clear the the reason that I'm telling you this is that you're not going to be able to see what you're hitting in dot mode. Okay. You're going to be able to see that it is an enemy, but you won't know what commander you're hitting. Okay. So if you are not fighting in dot mode, some of the number one targets that you should be focusing on in the open field for me, my number one target Zhang Yu. This is because he is so squishy and he has a really strong defense reduction on the active skill he's gonna pop this active skill it's aoe he's gonna pop it very very often because of his low rage requirement you just want to get the zhang Yu out of the way okay first of all you're probably gonna trade really well against him he is kind of a glass cannon so you're gonna be able to get a ton of kills off the zhang Yu. and also it's just gonna once you kill him it's gonna help the rest of your armies perform really well if you don't see a zhang Yu, uh, which you might not right because you know a lot of players have moved on to huo for example then i would recommend focusing on Boudicca prime she also is not as squishy as Zhang Yu, for example, but again, the debuff on her active skill is very, very powerful. Okay. It is only a single target, but she really, really is detrimental to that target. And you really just want to make sure you get the Boudicca out of the way. A lot of players are pairing her with YSG still, and that's going to make it a very squishy army and you should be able to trade pretty well against them. Now, remember this video is tips to get more kills. Okay. So there are definitely higher priority targets in the open field than Zhang Yu, for example. But if what you want is kills, then focus on the weakest armies in the field. And this should go without saying, but if you see any like gold key commanders or anything like that, like you definitely want to focus on them. If you see the Ethel Fleds, if you see some outdated commanders, if you see some commanders that should be secondaries, just go for it. Okay. Richard, like the, Richard is a punching bag in the open field. Just go for those older commanders. They're definitely going to be some nice kills. Now, tip number five is a little bit contradictory to tip number four, and that's because tip number five is always play in dot mode which again you know this isn't really going to be possible if you're mainly playing on mobile i know it's harder to play on dot mode on mobile at least from my experience so use tip number four on mobile use tip number five on pc but for me i would recommend always 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 play in dot mode and that's because it is more important to be 
hitting the target closest to you and always be in combat than it is to target the correct commander that you should be targeting. For example, you know, I could make a list here and say, oh, this commander is number one priority. This commander is number two priority and so on and so forth. And that could be true, but even more important than that is the position of your armies in the open field and just staying connected to your enemy. Okay. Now, the reason that dot mode is so effective with this is because if you zoom in, it's a little bit harder to see exactly where your armies are in the open fields. Okay. Here you can see that they all look like they're pretty much in the same exact spot. Right. But if you zoom out into dot mode, you can see that my Guan Yu is significantly in front of my other armies. So that matters a lot. And of course you could see that here, but in general, it's going to be way easier in a massive murder ball fight to control your armies in dot mode, because you're going to know exactly where they are. And it's way easier to prevent overextending. It's way easier to see when the enemy has overextended and it's going to make it really, really easy to farm kills from those players who are really not effective at controlling their position on the map. I can't stress this enough. The position of your troops matters so much in open field fighting. You want to stay near the front of the pack and facing your enemy. So that way your skill shots all go towards the group of enemies, but you don't want to be so far forward that all of your enemies start swarming you and targeting you. And if you've ever won how you know sometimes you'll be fighting and then all of a sudden you're five X swarmed like instantaneously it's because your enemy is playing in dot mode and they have basically selected all their troops and right clicked your one army that's out of position and boom you are instantly five X surrounded and that's how you get really bad trade so always 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 if you can play in dot mode tip number six has to do with altars now altars are interesting because you're not going to get that many kills from them because they you can only use one army at a time but if you are a free to play player this could be a good opportunity for you because a lot of times the whales will run around with their seven armies and they'll clap you every day but here each player can only bring one army so this could be a really good opportunity for you and one thing that i would recommend here is that you know even though you can only use one army at a time you can still maximize the amount of kills that you get here by leaving your other armies at the gate to that altar. Okay. So what do I mean by this? Well, of course, obviously only one army can go into the gate at a time, but you can leave your other armies literally standing right outside that gate. So basically I like to think of it as like reloading. Okay. So you're in the altar, you fight till you die, which is a little bit counterintuitive to how you would normally open field fight. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but once you die, your army will sad face. Okay. It turns gray. You'll see it on the side. And then your army will run back to your city much faster than it would normally. If you were to just simply click the retreat button. If you guys didn't know that now, you know, but once your army sad faces, even if it's still in the altar, you can send in your second army. So what I would recommend here is have at least two armies always ready to go one in the altar and one waiting at the gate. And once the one army dies, you send in the other army. And then as that army is walking to the fight, your other army that just went back to your city, you heal up, you send it back to the gate. Okay. Usually I would have one in and one at the gate, or you could have one in and two at the gate. It depends on what you want to do. If you are wondering what are the best armies that you can use for altars. First of all, I would say Liu Che with CPO will absolutely clap. It absolutely pops off. If you don't have that Guan CPO performed really well for me as well. You can still use that for sure. Nevsky with Joan also performs super well here, or you could do Huo primary Nevsky secondary. That is going to be a nice way to farm some kills as well, since you can only bring one army, but really I would recommend AOE. I know some people swear by this double single target combo. I personally, you know, I don't use it. I prefer the AOE. So have your Liu Che with CPO in the altar and then your Nevsky Joan right outside the gate and just keep swapping them back and forth. And that's going to be the fastest way for you to get kills at the altar. Moving on to tip number seven, this has to do with when you should retreat in the open field. Now, if you take a look at my armies here, you can see that their health bar is in white. You can see it also on the right here. This means that they have a significant amount of troops, a sufficient number. Okay. If they're at perfect health, meaning they're at 100% health, you're not even really going to see the, the bar over here. And I can show you that if I just retreat for a second, now you can see my Guan Yu doesn't even have a bar. Okay. So that's how you know that he's at full health. Typically what you want to do, unless you're in like an altar or a really important fight, or if you're really far from your city, what you want to do is retreat back to your city under 50%. Okay. Once you go below 50%, you're going to see your health bar changes to, it's going to be yellow. Okay. And at that point, if you guys didn't know below 50% and especially below 33 and 25%, that is where a significant number of your sev wounds come from. And so if you retreat at that moment, then you're going back 
back to your city with a really good trade and the reason that you want to get efficient trades meaning that you get you know two kills for every one kill that you take or three to one or four to one or whatever you can even get up to ten to one some of the trades that i got in this kvk were insane but the reason that you want efficient trades is because that is how you're going to manage your resources for your hospital the most effective okay you don't want to be doing one-to-one -one trades because that can get it very expensive or even worse less than one-to-one -one. going negative is very expensive that is the most expensive way to get your kill points or get your kills for kvk so you don't want to do that so you want the most efficient trades as possible and that means retreating when your army gets to yellow again there are some exceptions to this if you're very far from your city and it's like a nine minute walk back then you might want to just fight to the death but if you can and if you're close to your city retreat when it makes the most sense tip number eight is something that i've alluded to throughout this video and that is play on pc okay play on pc you have a massive advantage on pc i'm not afraid to say it pc players do have an advantage absolutely no question 100 and that is because not only does the game typically just run really really smooth on pc but also because you can be hardwired into your network right you can run an ethernet cable from your computer to your router so you have the best connection and also hotkeys right now you can see that um, i can select all of my troops in multiple different ways i can use control a and that will select all the troops on the screen or i can do control shift a and that will select all of my armies in the open field so even if they're not on the screen here you can see on the right i can still select all of them okay and then i can move them over here if i want to by just right clicking so right clicking allow allows you to move to a given location or you can attack a particular target so it's super important to use hotkeys it's super important to play on pc you have an absolutely massive advantage especially because you can still use the hotkeys in dot mode right so i can select all with uh, control a or control shift a and you can move them around the open field just like this you can send them to cities you can send them to attack things so you can do everything from dot mode and you just have a massive advantage on pc the other thing that i will say is that when you are playing in dot mode on pc you want to keep screen flicker turned on and i know that that gets really annoying for some players you will get used to it but the reason for this is because when you're in dot mode it's a lot harder to tell when you're being surrounded or if you're hitting somebody else right because the only thing that you can see when you're fighting in dot mode is the little red attack marker next to all your different armies you don't really see the direction of your aoe you don't see anything right so what i like to do is in dot mode i actually keep screen flicker on so that way i know if i'm out of position immediately i'll know okay i'm the one being targeted i should pull back i should pull the enemy into our fighting territory and our ball right and that's that's the best strategy on pc so keep screen flicker on if you can stand it and it's really going to help give you a lot of information as to when you're targeted tip number nine is a little bit of a cheesy tactic and i've talked about this on the channel before this is really easy to do with with your when you're on pc but right now i can stop my troops right on top of the flag it's a little bit annoying and you can do this even on like other players cities for example but basically what i've done here is i've made it very hard for players other players to uh target and click and drag on that city okay now of course i i can do it but if you have a ton of players doing this what you're gonna find is that and especially if you do this on like a city for example sometimes as long as you don't have to worry about aoe from a defending flag right like if you're the aggressors you're rallying a flag as long as you're not in the alliance that's rallying it and you don't have to worry about the aoe on the flag or let's say the flag is being defended by something that doesn't have aoe right then you can stand literally on top of the flag and other players will click and drag to reinforce the flag and they'll accidentally hit your armies and that is accidentally free kills because typically players will reinforce flags and rallies with weak commanders that are just stuffed full of troops so if you have somebody sending their ethel fled into into a, a flag and they accidentally instead of jumping into the flag start attacking your guan cpo well great news you are going to absolutely pop off as i mentioned before it's also important to do this on top of enemy players cities okay it actually becomes kind of difficult for them to target your troops if they're if you're literally on top of their own city but also the reason that you would do this is because a lot of times what players will do is they will put their city literally right next to a flag like some cities will be on top of a flag that way they can quickly have players jump into the city and then jump into the flag so they minimize the amount of damage that they take from the rally or garrison right but if you're standing inside that player's city then what happens is just like with the flag players will click to drag into that city and sometimes instead of jumping into their their ally city 
they'll start attacking your army right and that's again free kills for you so tip number nine kind of a cheesy one but definitely a strategy that i like to use and it also pisses off the enemy which is also really really nice and also it makes it harder for them to reinforce things and that gives you an advantage in the open field so lots of reasons to use this tip but free kills is definitely one of them tip number 10 is called cheeseburgering okay and i think that this this term is credited to chiskel i think he was the first one to use it because this tactic is very very cheesy and honestly I hate the term cheeseburgering, but I think a lot of players use it. So I'm going to use it here. But basically what this means is that if there's, let's say the enemy is attacking our flag and there's a ton of enemies on our territory, but my city is here, I can jump out of my city and quickly start hitting one person. And then they might not even realize that I'm hitting them. And by the time that they realize that I'm attacking them, I've fired off one or two of my active skills. And then I jump back into my city. Okay. It's very cheesy. It's very cheap. And the reason is because they don't really have much chance to fight you back right now if you're in dot mode it helps a lot and a lot of times i'll see players try to cheeseburger me but i'm sitting here just with all my troops selected and as soon as i see them pop out of the city i right click the dot right and you immediately start sniping the cheeseburger so there is a you know a way to counter this a little bit but a lot of players aren't really paying that close of attention so one thing that you could do to get free kills is basically cheeseburger jump out of your city hit a target once you fire off an active skill or if you get targeted of course then you run back to your city ideally you want to pop off both commanders active skills to get the best bang for your buck but if you're instant 5x 7x swarmed then of course you want to retreat immediately but this is a way to farm some cheap and easy kills if the enemy is on your territory and it's a very slow way to get kills but it's pretty much guaranteed and it's very you know cost effective so you can farm kills this way slowly over the course of a kvk for those of you wondering i would recommend using some of those high kill armies that we talked about before so pakal herald or martel with herald or gorgo with liu che or you could use something like zhang yu with nevsky for example that army for for example will really pop off the active skill really fast because of zhang yu this is also where having feral nature helps a ton okay cheeseburgering you definitely want feral nature because it gives you that chance of really just popping your active skill as fast as possible and running away so a couple of tips for cheeseburgering uh definitely a way to farm some kills in kvk tip number 11 sounds really simple but you would be surprised at how many players don't do this and that is always fight with a war rune now this is especially important for free to play players but you instantly gain more stats by having a rune on your army now if you are a free to play player you're probably only going to be open field fighting with three armies max right because we talked earlier in the video about how you want to have troop expansions and you want to have a min maxed focus on your crystal tech for a couple of different troop types one or two and so that means that you're probably not going to field fight with five armies because all your troops are going to be in those three and that means you'll have two troop slots available for other things one of those things is you should literally just send an army to a holy site or the crusader fortress or whatever and have it camp inside of that building and then every two hours or whenever your specific rune is up go back out grab that rune and go back into safety okay that is the best way to fight you're instantly going to have more stats than other players who aren't doing this and if you are a free-to-play player this will matter a ton i guarantee you you need every advantage that you can get so don't be lazy if you have to teleport closer to a rune grab it and teleport away and if you put your rune grabbing army into the crusader fortress for example then you can teleport so it's very important always 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 fight with a rune tip number 12 also has to do with altars now if you do have access to an altar but you're not going to fight for it or you lose the fight for it or whatever a lot of times what will happen is players of the enemy camps will send their armies to that altar and they'll sit there and then after the altar is over they're just gonna leave these super weak pathetic armies around chuck what is a chuck doing over here brother so you get my point okay these armies are absolutely pathetic and they're literally just here to farm the honor from the altar which is fine so if you have access to this altar after the altar is over and they're afk they're offline they're not paying attention they just left these armies here then what you can do is you can go in ideally with some of your allies right you don't want to be the only one there but ideally you could come in here with a you know nevsky joan or you can come in here with a Tsao Tsao Nevsky, right? You could come in here with a very fast cavalry army so you can be in and out. The idea here is that you run in here and you fight these weak armies that are basically not going to fight you back at all. And they're just complete trash commanders, right? You come in here, you get your free kills and then you get away. And again, it's better to do this with allies. And what you really ought to do 
is like for example um this level 13 barb fort what you can do is you can rally one of these forts and then you have basically you know a couple of million units go towards that altar very fast right because the the rallies they march really really quickly and then once you get close to the to the gates of the altar you cancel the rally and everybody runs into the gate and you get your free kills and then by the time the enemies realize what happened it doesn't even matter because they're all dead anyway so keep that in mind this is a nice way if you're paying attention and you're online at the right times then you can get some nice free kills tip number 13 is another really effective way to get free kills but it is kind of pathetic honestly and it does take a significant amount of micromanaging and time and that would be to kill enemy farmers in a contested area so here you can see that we still have access to coming into uh reinhardt over here and you can see that there's obviously a lot of enemy flags in this area so theoretically there could be enemies that are on this territory i don't think there are any right now because they have access to king's land where you can get better nodes and better resources but if you come into a zone where the enemy is farming then you can go through that pass that we control and you can go through with a with a commander like Tao Tao, for example or belisarius right and you can go in and you can attack their Cleopatras, their Matildas, their Joan of Arcs, their Constances. Typically, you're going to be killing a lot of farming armies, and they're going to be filled with siege, and they're not going to be able to fight you back. Now, the best and most effective way to do this is you can actually send your armies to resource nodes. Okay. Uh, let me just show you guys over here. What you can do is you can jump in. Well, I guess I can't cause these are taken, but you can jump in and out of resource nodes, just like you can jump in and out of flags or cities or anything like that. Right. And this is going to help you move around the map really, really quickly. And that's something that is really going to help you get in and out of enemy territory without being spotted. Okay. The reason that you would use Belisarius or Tao Tao for this is because they have the mobility tree. They're their march speed is very fast now this is also super important for zones that are newly contested because as you go into a zone for the first time you're building flags and a lot of times you need to make space for allies to teleport in and so one thing that players will do is once they teleport to the front line they'll send out an army to start gathering a node that way that node gets depleted and then somebody else can teleport in that spot and so once a pass opens you will see a lot of players start farming near their pass and that's going to be one way if you don't have that many troops left and you can't really help in any other way you can send a sneaky little tau tau across the map and start killing a bunch of their farmers and you're going to feel really good about that now the last thing i want to mention here is that sometimes players will farm with full real armies they'll farm with their luce cpo right and next thing you know you're getting clapped with aoe or a ton of you know counter attack damage a lot of times people will use martel for this right because his counter attack damage is so high typically you can still trade really well against these but if you're using a belisarius for example you might have a little bit of trouble so if you see a real army you probably want to run away and use the resource node jumping to your advantage this will help you get home safe tip number 14 has to do with when you are online some of the most important battles are where you're going to get the most amount of kill points in a very short window of time so of course when King's Land opens that's gonna be a ton of really big fights for two days right unless you're you know unless King's Land ends quickly for you but anytime that there's a really big pass opening that happens or anytime that there is you know kill event for mightiest governor right those are really good opportunities for you to come online and get a really significant amount of kills in just a couple of hours right and if you miss these big moments these big pass openings if you miss king's land if you miss the kill events right then you may have a really hard time getting your 30 million kills right because by the time you're trying to catch up near the end of kvk the enemies might have already won or lost or they are out of troops or resources right so as kvk goes on it becomes harder and harder to catch up if you miss those big moments so always try to be online when it matters the most tip number 15 is that you should definitely use your farm accounts now this is super important because if you are a tier 5 player then you can use your universal speed ups to heal down your hospital when you're fighting in the open fields right so a lot of times as a t5 player you're gonna probably run out of resources before you run out of speed ups at least that's been my experience so and as you can see here my resources are significantly lower than when i started kvk i used billions of each resource right like multiple billions so you want to go into kvk with as many resources as possible with the understanding that that's probably going to be your bottleneck 
later on the line you're probably going to run out of resources before you run out of troops and before you run out of speed ups so i highly recommend that you have at least one or two farm accounts that you're using throughout the year during the off season so that way you can farm a ton of resources to fund your fighting in kvk as i mentioned earlier you can also mix your armies with a small amount of tier four as well to kind of offset the cost and have lower hospital bills that's up to you what percentage you want to use obviously the more t5 you use the more effective you're going to be in the open field but tier four are still really solid units they are still quite strong so please do not be afraid to use them you can look at their stats and you can see that their stats aren't significantly lower i mean it does make a difference it's 192 attack compared to 220 okay so yeah it, they they are tier five obviously stronger right but they are way more expensive to heal they're way 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 more expensive to heal so really like you want to you want to use tier four when you when and if you can to lower the cost that it that it will take to heal down your hospital tip number 16 is only for whales and i don't recommend doing this but you can do it and that is taking a city rally on purpose some whales who are over 100 million power or over 80 or 90 million power with a good garrison you can literally just leave your alliance join another alliance and be off territory and just take a city rally and once your city is full then you can use a, a peace shield or whatever and save the rest of your troops now you got to be careful because you could get imprisoned or something like that but this is one way that you know some whales farm a ton of kills to make their stats look really good the reason that i don't recommend doing this is because it's a waste of troops right those troops in this in the city defense in the garrison are just being thrown in the garbage just to boost your stats right it's not really helping your kingdom win kvk you could argue that if you trade well then like you know the enemy has fewer troops to fight in the open field sure but at the end of the day like losing you as a player in the open field probably isn't worth it if you're a whale so it's a really selfish strategy i don't recommend doing it of course if you're planning on migrating after kvk well then you might as well take some city rallies boost your stats up lower the amount of troops that you have to to help with your passport page requirements right so just understand that taking city rallies pretty selfish usually frowned upon and i wouldn't really recommend it for most people and tip number 17 and this should be your absolute last resort is kill trading you can arrange a kill trade with the enemy and the reason that i say this tip for last is because it is the most pathetic okay if you if you haven't genuinely gotten the kills when it actually mattered then it's quite pathetic to do and arrange a kill trade personally i would say kill trading up to 30 million probably not worth it uh, because a lot of times you'll do an even one into one trade whereas what i think is most important is probably kill trading up to at least the 15 million the 15 million kill point marker is very important because that's where you're going to get the uh, two iconic crystals here okay iconic crystals you can't buy them there's no way to like get them from bundles i mean there are other ways to get them but like they're very hard to come by okay so you really want to make sure you get this 15 million kill point uh iconic crystal it's worth noting that this does require tier four or higher so again if you're evenly trading tier four yeah you know tier four it don't cost that much to heal but again you're talking about millions of troops here and it's literally just a waste of resources i mean yes you're trading resources effectively for iconic crystals and, and 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 like this kind of stuff but really kill trading up to 30 million probably not worth it it's very pathetic and you're basically just padding your stats to make your account look better which at the end of the day is just deceptive because then your kingdom doesn't actually know how good of a fighter you really are how much are you really bringing to the table so it's the most selfish way to get kills by just arranging a kill trade i've never done it i never needed to do it there have been times where maybe i should have done it so that way my stats look better but at the end of the day i know how effective i I can be on the battlefield so i don't really care what my stats look like it seems like everyone else cares about my stats more than i do so yeah i wanted to throw this at the end there um you can kill trade especially if you want to get to 15 million kills for the iconic crystal and you could do it up to 30 if you want the conquest coin that's up to you of course if there really was no fighting in your kvk then you might not really have a choice but to kill trade and you could arrange some fun duels you know i'm not saying it's always bad but anyway guys those were all the tips that i have for you for maximizing your trades and farming as many kills as you can in kvk if there's any tips that i missed go ahead and drop them in the comment section below i would love to hear from you guys down there i'm always looking for ways for me to improve as well while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the arc i will talk to you guys again soon Peace.